Welcome to Sew Like a Pro Time. I'm Teresa Sigmund and you are in the right place to learn to choose, alter, and make the dance sport, country, and skate dress of your dreams. Today I have with me Terry Phillips, who is one of the Sew Like a Pro members, and this is a dress that is pretty close to being finished. So in today's video, what we're going to talk about is ways to finish it. Now, uh, you took a long break on this dress. Yes, about six months. Okay, so a six month break is a long enough time to need to come back in it and completely reevaluate where you want to go with it. And as you are making a dress for yourself or for your client, that actually is pretty common. Whether you take a break or not, you'll design something and then you try it on or you try it on your client and it's just not quite right. Mm -hmm. It needs some tweaking. So that's actually what we're going to just sort of have a good time doing. Right. And I would do the same thing if she was my client. Um, this is the first time actually Terry and I have met. And there's another blog where I interview Terry and, and about you know how she started sewing and why she signed up for the school. And so I hope you'll go watch it because it tells a little bit more about her background. We are literally just going to talk about we, we talked about this earlier <laughs> but now we're going to share it with you and so you hand sewed all of this lace on and it's immaculate so what you want you had a particular look that you wanted with that lace right i haven't done much dress sewing i started quilting and i'm pretty good with a needle and thread and when i first saw these motifs i thought it would look really wonderful as a quilted uh, interest because I wanted the dress to be different but simple and elegant and you don't see too many hand-sewn trapunto designs on a dress so uh, to just take it easy and just see how the whole thing sewed I just decided to do it by hand and, it, and it's beautiful it's really beautiful so because it is not machine sewn on, it's not glued on, which are two common techniques for applying lace. We're like, why cover it? And you bought this at Chris Ann? Yes. In Chris Ann in England, but there's also a Chris Ann in Toronto. Um, I believe. Yes, and I'll g give you the links for both of those stores below. But um, because it came this color versus you dyeing it, it's also very evenly distributed. So a lot of times I'll buy white lace or let's say I wanted a different color aqua then I would actually dye it so whenever we dye it ourselves or paint it it tends to be um, not as evenly the color isn't as good as these since they were professionally dyed so then Terry and I started talking well why cover it it's beautiful right what do we want to do with rhinestoning on this dress so we were both talking around this asymmetrical design is really nice it goes from um, this strong cobalt blue and then she's got these diagonal lines and so we talked about well what if we put um, continued the cobalt blue up on her right shoulder so that it creates a nice diagonal when she's in dance position oh this is a standard gown and so the if we did that then she could tie in the two colors with mixing you could even do a light turquoise, a darker turquoise, and even a cobalt and a, something in the lighter family. Right, and also with stones. Yes, yes. And then just keep that going up and over. And you had also talked about heavily rhinestoning this. Right. I'm playing with the idea. Yeah. I'm not sold on it yet. Okay. Because when you put rhinestones on something, it constricts your movement and getting in and out of a costume very quickly. Things mm -hmm. can pop off, and it changes the shape a little bit. It, I didn't it want does. to take too much stone; would take away from the quilting trapunto that I wanted to stand out. Yeah. So I'm trying to work at how to um, uh, complement this without overpowering the stone. This color combination was an inspiration from the first dress that you purchased. Yes, it was a third stage hand-me-down. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I got a lot of compliments on the color yeah. combinations and I just felt good in it so I decided to do something that you're comfortable with right and it has a really pretty rhinestoning pattern it's got very rounded shapes because the initial dress is rounded and this has points we can she can actually as she's stoning can actually play with that and continue the points so that the stones sort of fade up 
off to different directions. So the good thing, because um, your dance teacher is taller than you. Six one. Okay, so her dance teacher is quite a lot taller than her. So if we can create um, this height. height, yes. If we can create height and then, because he's got a really beautiful wide frame, then if we can create these nice diagonal lines, that would help make you taller and wider up top while at the same time slimmer in the tummy and the hips. Mm -hmm. And these colors are going to be beautiful because they, they really pop. Yeah, and this jewel, this bright, vibrant color on your the red is mm -hmm. fabulous on you. So mm -hmm. I think you're very wise in choosing to put the blue, the cobalt blue, up towards your face right. versus this more aqua color. I have very light skin and it. I need to pull from my complexion yes. to make it heavier on top. Um, one of the things that Terry had mentioned when we were talking about ideas before is what to do with a sleeve. Should she go bare arm? Should she do a sleeve? And so just because it's convenient when we're holding lace up on ourselves, she held the lace up so that it just went straight down the arm. And I said, no, 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 it's too linear. It, it needs some movement, some built-in movement like that. So then she would want to come in and connect it on the front. This is why you hold it down straight by yourself. <laughs> right, that's why I did that. Uh huh. Because you can't do it otherwise. And then have it actually wrap around the arm a little bit. And that's very effective. Mm -hmm. That's very effective. Because it would give her the linear width for her top line while still keeping this diagonal shape going. Right. It's very difficult to take a, a something that moves and create it still to move on your body. You know, it's, yes. uh, it's, it's quite challenging. See, these, these so like approach, right now there's 27 or 29 students in seven countries mm -hmm. and whenever you ladies email me or because you're only the second member I've ever met whenever I get to meet and meet them and see their work or they send me pictures of stuff I adore the fact that you all are so creative and so resourceful it's like a family now yeah it, it is like a family and and everybody gets to kind of share ideas and whatnot and it's it's really inspiring and encouraging for me to see how um, what ingenuity excuse me what ingenuity you ladies have it's mm -hmm. really pretty cool and some some of you have a like you actually didn't from the sounds of it didn't have a whole lot of ballroom dressmaking experience none this is my first and oh it's only wow. because I took Teresa's class did it turn out so well her her patterns were spot on and it was not that difficult to do not that mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because uh, some of the ladies have been making dresses for other people for a long time. So I was me no dresses that so whatsoever. I was a craft wow. person and a and a quilter. Yeah, a quilter. But you have really nice. You have a nice design eye, which is good. Actually, hang on. Speaking of design eye, I'm going to stick this back up here. Um, the one of the things that you did. <laughs> <laughs> we were peeking underneath the skirt earlier, is that because this, the underskirt here was your demo skirt. Yes, I was playing around with the skirt pattern that you presented in one of your um, modules. Yeah. So I thought I would practice on it and still use it. Yes, and I think all in all for the first one, it turned out really well. I remember seeing a picture of this on the Facebook group, mm -hmm. and this one, I don't, Right. I, I didn't show it. Oh, on the okay. Facebook. I was going to say I don't remember seeing no. that, but it would have been at least six this months is the ago. The premiere showing. <laughs> I know it isn't exciting. <laughs> I originally thought this was an American style gown because she has a very sleek skirt versus having a whole bunch of volume and ruffles. So tell me why you chose um, not to do all the volume that's going on in standard gowns right now. I wanted something that was elegant. I didn't want something that was in style. I wanted to feel good when I walked on the floor. I don't like to follow the group. I like to be an innovator. And that's what makes you feel good in your gown. Mm -hmm. um, and when you learn how to do that with your program, you know what's right and what's wrong for you. So that when we do create something, it shows our character and not somebody else's off the rack that's not in your color or in your bra size. <laughs> <laughs> and this, Teresa's program is, is really good. It's just a wonderful program to follow. Thank you. It really is.
Thank you. I'm not paying her to say this. No, she's not. <laughs> I am refraining from crying. If you watch the first <laughs> video with her, I cried. <laughs> um, okay. The back here would be the is we've got the same kind of diagonal lines going. The the nice thing about having these little appliques is that they can be cut up. They do not have to be used all in one long piece. Mm -hmm. So should Terry decide to come in and add a little baby one right here, she can absolutely cut them out and just keep it going. Oh, that could be interesting. We hadn't even talked about that mm -hmm. yet. Because th if this ends up being the cobalt side, then that could be interesting to, to bring some of those down. Uh, well, I originally wanted to have these as part of my um, straps and I had was going to follow that around the back and through your class okay. I realized how I could take one of these motifs and make them stiff so yes. that I could do that and I was playing with that idea so it's still a work in progress okay. it is and then you'll post as you you know start getting back into the stress then you'll just post them she'll post pictures on the post private on. Facebook group and everybody says yes Ooh, no uh. yeah do this <laughs> no this looks great and yeah. it really is very much a family um, as far as your fit here goes it looks like because this you really had to take in just a just teeny little a bit teeny here bit and the only reason why I found that out is um, I wanted to add uh, more support and I had to put larger cups in a in an older okay. bra. And when I did that, I just noticed that there was like a maybe a quarter of an inch that I needed to. And it that it looks better, but I just got pins underneath here to show me exactly how much to take in, so that's it doesn't look so poofy <laughs> in, in real yeah. life or whatever. Right, which because it's still a work in progress. Yeah, it's still pinning. <laughs> yeah. So one quick tip before we leave is because. You chose to sew in a bra here, yes. so don't spend 30 or 40 bucks on a brand new bra. Either use one that is in your drawer where you know how the elastic gets shot in the back or the straps don't fit. You can just use an older bra, one of your old ones that you wouldn't necessarily want to wear on a day-to-day -day basis. You can take that and sew it into the dress. Or go to Value Village and buy an old one and put an extender in the back. Yeah. So because the at the thrift store there was one that had the correct bra cup size but was too snug going around the rib cage, this is, Terry put an extender back here, and the nice thing about that is, is that it also allows her to, this is my microphone app, <laughs> <laughs> this also allows her to pull the bra down and to do like a little um, belt loop so that the belt loop will actually hook around it and then just keep that bra strap tucked down there nicely so it doesn't show. Yeah, so this, I mean, especially for your first dress, this is really quite astounding. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's beautifully done. All right, and so Terry, bless her heart, I came in and took over her house, <laughs> so I am going to let her go have dinner. <laughs> Go eat a meal after a long day at work. So thank you very much for being You're here. You're very welcome, Teresa. I, I enjoyed am, it. Yeah, it's been my pleasure. I am so happy to have, have met you. And really, this is not just TV speak. This is like no. so awesome because everybody really is a family. Yeah. And it's so nice to be able to put a live, living, breathing face with a name that I see in my email box or on right. Facebook. So anyway, if you have enjoyed this video and, and want to contribute ideas, design ideas, whatever, feel free. Leave any comments below. Please go to Sew Like a Pro. Leave me your name and email address so that I can make sure you never miss one of the sewing tips. And lastly, tell all your dancing, skating, sewing friends because it's way more fun when you have a group supporting each other. So that's it. Thanks so much for joining Terry and I. Thank and you very much. Yeah, we'll see you again another time.